So if you have your Bible with you, just quickly go to John. So every time I try to speak about prayer and fasting, every time the Lord took me back to the kingdom, every single time. And I know that I've preached, oh, I don't know how many times about the kingdom of the Lord. <laughs> Too many times to mention. We have series upon series upon series where I spoke about the kingdom, about the kingdom, about the kingdom. So um, I know that that is the good news. That is the gospel. Amen. Jesus said, when you go out, go and preach the gospel. Tell those who are enslaved they are free. Uh, bind up the brokenhearted. Open up the blind eyes. Pray for the sick and they shall recover. Amen. That is the gospel. So that was the commandment the Lord gave us to go out and do. The Lord told us to go and preach the gospel. So over and over again, when we go to schools or whenever we preach, it's impossible for me just to preach a nice message there's many, many nice messages that we can preach in the Bible. Very, very good stories we can use to motivate you and build you up. But if our main um, reason for preaching is not the gospel, then we are missing the mark. Amen? As ons nie die goeie nies bedien nie, dan mis ons op die oude in die merk. Wat help het ons weet alles van die Bible, maar ons ken nie die goeie nies nie? Wat help het ons, ons spreek allerhande mooie dinge oor wat gaan gebeur en wat gebeur het en hierdie story wat baie mooi is en daar story wat baie mooi is, as ons op die oude in die punt mis. The, the most important thing for me is that people know the gospel, that they know the good news. The reason Jesus died is the good news. Amen. He died on the cross to do what? To give us good news. No more bad news. No more fear. No more stress or anxiety of what will happen one day when he comes again. Because many people are so in fear for one day as he comes, that they don't know what they need to do. And they think they are so bang for the day as Jesus comes. But I am surprised. Amen. The Bible doesn't say we have to be fearful for the end of days. We have to be excited. Why? And, and maybe I'm going to go in the, in, into that direction. I'm not sure today. But I spoke about it many times before. And even this weekend, uh, I think I preached 101 messages in one, in one hour. Oh, actually, I preached two hours. But I, I mixed it all in one hour. And then I started to close for one hour. But... As I was preaching, I just couldn't stop because I had to tell the people about the good news. They have to understand the good news because so many people are caught up and they are so afraid of one day, what's going to happen one day, that they are missing the plan that the Lord has for their lives today. How many of us wait until we go to heaven and then everything's going to be okay? No. I said a while ago, we, we are, as Christians, waiting at the bus stop, waiting for the bus. But the bus has come 2,000 years ago. And we are waiting for the bus to take us to a place where everything will be okay. The place where everything is okay is already on this earth, but we no, don't know it. We are waiting for one day. And when the Lord comes again, then everything will be okay. When He comes and takes us away, then we'll be healed in the heavens. Let me ask you this question. If I die today, am I being born again if I die? No. Does anything change if I die today and go to heaven? Because we all know that when I go into heaven, I'm going to be perfect. Am I right? There's no sin, sickness, pains, diseases, anything in heaven. Am I right? So when I go to heaven today, everything is going to be perfect. So if I die, this isn't just my body that stays behind and my spirit that goes to heaven. Amen? I just want to make the whole idea... I wanted to make it look stupid, the things that we've been preaching or, or, or believing for a long time. I wanted to understand. I don't change when I go to heaven. My body only stays behind. But why do I go to heaven? Because I'm already saved in my spirit. So to do I get upgraded or do I change in my spirit who I am when I go into heaven? It's because my spirit goes to heaven. Do I then change? Does anything change in my spirit? No. Am I challenging you a little bit? A little bit. Well, everybody thinks one of them can take and then everything will be okay. As if when we die, something great happens in us and then everything will be perfect in heaven. But do you know what? That spirit that goes to heaven one day is already in me today, here on this earth. So it means the person that I one day will be in heaven, I am actually already on this earth. I just don't know it. Niemand waarvan praat jy? Dit is wat die woord van God ons leer. This is the word of God. Something great doesn't happen when I die. My body just stays behind. My soul. The Bible says we are made up out of free. Body, spirit, and soul. The Bible says that if I am one with God, I am one spirit with God. 
<laughs> so even while I'm on this earth, I'm already one spirit with God. The Bible says the fullness of the Godhead is already in me, in this body. The fullness of God is already in this body. As I as I do it, I'm going to be perfect. And as I say, I'm not perfect in the world. I'm going to be perfect in the world. What hou my terug om te wees wie ek een dag in die hemel sal wees? My own natuur. My old nature is, is holding me back to be the person I will one day be in heaven. But we all think something great happens when we die. So all of us are waiting for one day for the Lord to come again and then everything will be perfect. No, I'm already made perfect in my body. I'm already washed in the blood of Jesus. That's why I can now go into his presence. Not one day when I die. Am I challenging you a little bit? It's just a mentality that we've had for so long that we always think one day, one day, one day. So what happens to people on this earth? They all wait for the Lord to come again and everything will be perfect. So that they feel they don't have to do anything on this earth. They feel all I have to do is just believe that I'm saved and one day I'll go to heaven. That has never been the plan that Jesus had for us. Never. Never. Just to go to heaven one day. He wanted us to bring heaven on this earth. That is why we pray, our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, where? On this earth as it is in heaven. So why do we always pray, your kingdom come on this earth, if we believe God is one day going to take us out of this kingdom, to a kingdom in heaven? I think that now someone has been scared. I've challenged someone just now. But just stick with me, I'm going to explain all of this. Because I'm so excited. Because when people understand that they don't have to wait for one day, that they know that Jesus already did everything on the cross, they will feel, why did I waste my time for so long if everything has already been done on the cross? Why did I wait for something to happen if everything already happened? That's what I feel. I feel an urgency in my heart. I feel a, a passion of a, of, a, of a type of a, who can I say, what's an urgency in Afrikaans? A dringendheid in my heart that ons for long die mark gemis het. Lang die mark gemis het. And that God say, kom na, kom na, kom na, word wakker. That that's how I feel. See, the Lord says, come, people wake up, wake up. Jesus died on the cross. He already did everything he could do for you to be, to be made perfect. What is going to happen? Nothing mysterious or nothing great is going to happen if you die and go to heaven. When the Lord comes again and we go to heaven. Nothing great is going to happen. <laughs> You're only going to be rid of your soul and your body. But in your spirit, the Lord already placed everything that He has for you. He already made you perfect, blameless, spotless in His eyes. Jesus already washed you in His blood. You're already blameless. I can go on. When, when, when I leave my body behind, we don't, we, don't you say the sinful body is left behind? No, the sinful body is even under the blood of Jesus. Amen? So when I die, it doesn't all fall away and then I'm holy. That's why Paul says, people, even while you are on this earth, strip yourself of your old nature. Why must you strip yourself? Why must you yourself leeg maak and skoon maak van your own nature? Because there is a new nature now in you. There's a new nature inside of you. And the old things, strip it off. Because many of us do not know who we are in Christ. And this is why I'm going to share what I'm going to share. And if I've challenged things that you've believed in all your life, just give me an opportunity to explain it to you. Amen. Because we've been preaching this for a couple of weeks now. For, actually, for many years I've been preaching this. Since uh, I started in my ministry when I was 19 years old. And, uh, yeah, almost nine or eight years ago. We've been preaching about this. And I've been waiting and saying, Lord, wh when will people understand this? When will people uh, receive this word of grace, of your kingdom? When are they going to understand it? And I've been praying and praying and praying for it. But suddenly, that's why I'm so excited. You know, we've been, I've been preaching the kingdom with, with more boldness than ever before. And people are starting to understand and realize it. And it's such a blessing. <laughs> it's so amazing. Because the Lord said to me, if people still believe that one day they have to go somewhere to be fulfilled, to be blessed then they don't understand the kingdom of God. So we have to first tell them what is the truth about the kingdom of God, and then they will once again have a vision. Why is there so many people dying in sickness, dying in pains? Because they believe the sickness, they must carry that sickness. And one day when they go to heaven, they'll be okay. That's not the truth. 
The Bible teaches me and says that Jesus, all our infirmities was cast upon him so that we don't have to carry all those infirmities. Amen? So I don't have to carry sicknesses, pains, diseases. He carried them for me on his body, which then went to the grave and he rose up into a new life. So when I receive him and believe in him, I realize that I don't have to carry sicknesses and pains and diseases. Even if I've done wrong and even if I believe I deserve these pains because I've been a sinner. I still don't have to carry those pains or sicknesses or diseases because he carried them on the cross for my sake. Amen. So we have to understand who we are in Christ. I'm going to use a very simple example. You can just go to John 15. Okay, I'm going to do this once again. Um, This is not what the vine looks like, but let's say today this is a vine. (laughs) John 15 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, he cuts away. Now, everywhere you look, if you go to verse 3, if you go to verse 4, or actually go to verse 3, it says, You are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you. The teachings I have discussed to you. Verse 4. Dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. It says abide in me. Verse 5. Whoever lives in me and I live in him bears much fruit. Verse 6. If a person does not dwell in me, say in. It goes on. Verse 7. If you live in me. Then it goes on and on. Verse 9, abide in my love. And it says, keep my commandments. You will abide in my love. Verse 10. And so it goes on and on and on and on and on. And everywhere it says, you now belong to me. Now, the Bible explains to us that this is who we were. Jesus says, for you were in the world and you belong to the world. But now Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you. I mean, so let's say this is the world. So it says, you belong to the world. You existed in the world. But Jesus now says, but now I have come and I've chosen you, so now you belong to me. You belong to another. And he says, I have cut you off. So in the world, you had to sustain yourself. Am I right? Can you almost see? You had to have your own roots. You had to sustain yourself. You had to keep yourself happy. Am I right? You must yourself gelukkig hou it. You must yourself opgebouw it. Elke lieve dag. You must alles self gedoen het. But Jesus says, I'm, I'm going to cut you off. And no longer will you be a tree planted in the world on your own. I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to strip away your roots. That you don't have to sustain yourself. I'm going to cut you off. And I'm, I'm going to graft you into me. It takes a rope. Any person who knows how it works. Is you make a little incision in the branch. And you take another branch and you... And you Put it inside and then you close it up. Flippy will know what I'm talking about. You put it inside and you close it up. And then suddenly what happens? There's no more roots. This branch doesn't have any roots to sustain himself. Everything that this branch needs now to start bearing fruit comes from where? Comes from where? Comes from the vine. Comes from the tree. So Jesus says, I am the vine, you are? The branch. So now I no longer sustain myself. I can only make my own geluk with myself. I don't stand here. I can only make my freedom. I don't stand here. I don't. I is now in Jesus in geplaatst. The Bible says, "For if any man is in Christ, what is he? He is a new creation. I'm no longer a tree planted in the world. I'm now a branch that is in Jesus Christ. I am a whole new creation." So now I no longer sustain myself, but everything that he brings into himself, everything that makes him him, what happens now is flowing through me. So have you ever seen a branch work very hard to bear fruit? No. What must a branch do? Just stay connected to the tree. 